Everybody and welcome back to the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Troy, and today we are continuing the Forza Horizon 5 Rally series. I know it has been nearly a year since I've made one of these videos. Um, I've been away studying at university, and then this summer 2023, I've been away with my friends. We've been doing all kinds of great things. There's a few videos on the channel of what we got up to but today we are continuing with another episode of the rally series and i thought that we'd go ahead and use this it is the lancia 037 and i've just unlocked this car in forza horizon 5 it is part of the italian automotive seasonal update but basically all the cars start off stock like this one so i've just gone ahead and unlocked this car the start of the video we will build the car into s1 class so the 037 starts off in b class i know for a fact that you can build this thing into s1 class all the cars are built into s1 class providing that they can get into s1 class they will keep their stock engine so i know for a fact that this car can get into s1 with the stock engine all the cars also keep their stock drivetrain, so the 037 is rear-wheel drive. That did not stop it winning many, many rallies back in the day. Uh, even competed against the uh, Audi Quattro, which we have already run on the rally course. Uh, Audi Quattro did a 215, so hopefully we can maybe come somewhere near that. So yes, yeah, so we're going to be keeping the stock drivetrain. And we're also going to keep the stock Aspiration. I know for a fact that this thing already has a supercharger on it uh, from the factory. So we're going to leave that in there. We'll go ahead and do some visual upgrades to make this thing look more like a rally car. We'll get some big fog lights on the front. Um, not really sure what these change. Okay, so that's adding... Oh, that's a hideous spoiler. We can remove the spoiler. I think we'll just go for this one. Um, we can go ahead and get some rally mud flaps. Oh, we can get like some kind of weird bull bar and like a secondary exhaust. That's very weird. Uh, we'll just go for the mud flaps. That looks good to me. Um, the bonnet, we can go ahead and have like various different bonnets. Uh, I guess we'll get this one because it removes a bit more weight. And um, what does that actually add? I don't know what does that add it seems to remove a bit of drag so i don't know what it does but we'll go ahead and apply that as well so it looks a bit more like a rally car now so tires all the cars are running the off-road tire compound previously known as the rally tire compound if you played horizon 4 uh, some of the vehicles come standard with the off-road race tire compound so they have a slight edge over some of the other vehicles I know the Lamborghini LM002 and the Mercedes-Benz truck that are currently in first and second place. They both had the um, race tyre compound, which was previously known as the off-road tyre compound, if you played Horizon 4. Um, so we'll go ahead and slap on the biggest tyres that we can get. We'll also go ahead and widen the tyres, because that is going to give us more stability. Um, it doesn't really widen it a whole lot, so I'm happy with that. Then we'll go ahead and put in a sports clutch. We'll go ahead and put a race transmission in. I believe that might be a five speed, I think. Um, we'll put a carbon fiber drive shaft in for a bit of lightness. And we'll throw in a rally differential. On brakes, we want to upgrade the brakes as much as possible. And we'll slap the thing on off-road springs and dampers. That should soak up the bumps a little bit more nicely. We'll go ahead and put some anti-roll bars on there as well. Not going to bother with a roll cage, but we will go ahead and remove as much weight as possible. Um, so we actually go from 
2,500 pounds to 2,100 pounds. So we removed nearly 400 pounds, which is uh, quite a lot to be honest. So that should make it a little bit more nimble in the corners. Then we'll go ahead and just slap on all the engine upgrades. That should then take us up to S1 class. We'll get some new valves going. Oops, we want to go full valves. Uh, we'll get the race camshaft and valves because that is going to let us rev the engine out a little bit more. We can hopefully get a little bit more speed on the straights. We'll go for some forged pistons. We'll upgrade the supercharger as well. And then, of course, we need some better cooling and we'll get a lightened flywheel. So there is the O37 built. Um, if you want to see that again, then obviously you can rewind the video. But I'm going to go ahead and tune this car now and give it a nice coat of paint so it looks a bit more like a rally car. And I will see you guys down at the rally track. Okay, here we go with the first run in our 037 rally car. We're running almost 500 horsepower, about 470. Listen to that supercharger whine. That sounds absolutely fantastic. But yeah, we've got a rear engine setup, rear wheel drive, so plenty of weight over the rear wheels. We've got the supercharger for no lag. Yeah, we're not running a turbo on this beast. Uh, we keep to the right hand side of the water splash. It seems to have good turning. Uh, we know that the right hand side of that water splash can be a little bit faster. I'm trying to keep it in fourth, trying to keep the uh, gear as high as possible just to try and negate a bit of wheel spin. It does seem to want to wander a little bit. Fourth gear, it seems to grip up quite nicely. We often get a bit of oversteer around there, which we do, but that was lovely and controlled. Now we come on to the straight. Let's see how it deals with the bumps up here. It's been a little while since I've run this rally course. And the 037 soaks the bumps up nicely. Okay, coming into the hairpin, I'm going to knock it down to third. I'm only using about half the throttle getting it around that corner and we did have a big slide gets a little bit of air on the jump there coming into this corner lovely and controlled through there we weren't too wide although we're a little wide on the exit there now up the hill let's see what kind of speed we get at the crest 110 over the crest that was pretty good to be honest we've seen some of the faster cars doing 120 130 over there but obviously they are running all-wheel drive so that is not a bad showing from the little 037 through there little dab of brakes through that corner it is very deceiving that one you can take it a lot faster than you think going up to the final couple of corners just going to have a little lift off there and we'll knock it down to fourth coming down the hill we're already at the 212 second mark Let's see what we can do down the hill here. Oh, a little bit wide, nearly missed the checkpoint. And actually, we did hit a tree. That was absolutely terrible coming down the finish there. We had a, a big wobble and that really upset the car. So I definitely think we could get a 216 out of the 037, which currently our fastest two-wheel drive car is the DeLorean at 216. Uh, we've got a 224 there, which would still put it above the Crown Victoria, which was also rear-wheel drive. But we've got another couple of attempts. If I can keep it a bit more under control down the finish line, we'll see what we can do. Okay, here we go for round number two. I'm going to knock it straight up into second to try and negate a bit of wheel spin off the line. That might pick up a couple of tenths of a second. Now, if we can try and keep it straight down the finish line, we might be able to uh, get it into the 216s. I'm going to be early on the brakes here. We don't want to overshoot the corner. That would also void the run, which we cannot afford in this car. It does seem a little bit upset sometimes on some of the bumps. It soaks them up nicely, and then every now and then, when you're not expecting it, it does seem to throw a bit of a wobbly and uh, completely 
go off course, which is uh, very, very difficult to anticipate. But it's uh, handling these few corners quite nicely. A bit of oversteer there, that probably cost us a couple of tenths of a second. We get a bit of oversteer on that corner, but that was nicely controlled through there. It seems to be struggling on those bumps a little bit there. We'll knock it up to fifth and see what we can do on these bumps. It seems to handle these ones okay. It's like the little bumps that you're not expecting it to have an issue, and then it completely throws you off. Through the hairpin here, I'm just going to keep as little throttle on as possible. That was lovely through there. Just coast through the hairpin. We get a little bit more air time this time. Coming into the right-hander. That was a lot better through there, actually. We didn't go on the grass. We weren't as wide. Coming up the crest, let's see if we get any more speed. Maybe another mile an hour over the crest. That was a lot better. Probably a little bit too high geared coming out of that corner. We could maybe have got away with fourth. I'll see if we can turn it in this time without any brakes. I did have to have a little dab on the brakes. It's a very deceptive corner that one. Yeah, I still haven't quite got the hang of it. And like I said, I haven't run this rally course for probably a year or so. So I have to relearn it whilst I'm learning in a new car. Maybe I should have had a couple of practice runs. Now this is where the car got a bit upset last time, it's a lot better this time, we cross the line at I believe a 218, yes 218906, that will be enough to put the car just behind the Ford GT70 which was also a rear engine rear wheel drive rally car, so I think we can improve on that, uh, we'll see what we can do in the next run. Okay, the final run in the 037, not too much throttle off the line, straight up into second, and that will hopefully help the car grip up a little bit better. It's very controlled on the tarmac, which uh, usually these cars running on the rally tyres, um, it is a little bit difficult to get turned in on the tarmac, that was a little bit wide coming into there. The supercharger giving us all of the boost right from the bottom we've got no lag like we would with a turbo but that does cause the wheels to spin up a little bit more try and keep to the right hand side of that water splash it is slightly shallower we can pick up a couple of tenths we'll knock it down to fourth i think we're in fifth on the last run there so we'll try fourth and see if we can pick up a little bit more speed we actually didn't get much oversteer this time through that corner, so hopefully that means we will pick up a couple of tenths. It's a couple of tenths all around the course, add up to a second, and that can move the car up a place on the leaderboard. But now coming into the hairpin, we're going to knock it down to third. Nice bit of oversteer there. Not going to go too mad with the throttle through there. That was much, much better car gripped up nicely through there and seeing a lot of oversteer and uh, wheel spin through the hairpin but that was lovely a little bit wide on the exit again there but that can sometimes be a faster line cresting the hill this time at 112 again we get a big dive of understeer coming out of the uh, crest which was not what we needed had to jump on the brakes there Let's see if we can take this corner flat. No, I am having to have a little dab on the brakes. And you can see there, if we didn't have a dab on the brakes, we would have been even wider than we were. That's probably cost us any chance of beating the DeLorean there. Now this corner here, we're in fifth last time. We're in fourth this time. Let's see if that makes all the difference down the hill. It's going to be very, very close. I think we've beaten our previous lap time. We have a 218.305 will be the lap time for the 037. With a bit more practice, I think that car could have gone a lot, lot faster. Uh, like I said, I am a little bit rusty on this course as well. But let's go to the leaderboard and see how the 037 racks up against some of our other previous cars. Well, there we go. That was the 
run for the 037. A 218.035 will be enough to put the Lancia in 12th position overall. Sadly, didn't quite make it into the top 10. But that does put it on a podium position for our second fastest two-wheel drive vehicle. Uh, just behind the DeLorean, which did a 216 Point three seven zero. So not a bad showing from the 037. It soaked up the bumps very nicely. It gripped up very nicely for a rear wheel drive car. Um, it had just the right amount of oversteer in the corners. I think where the car struggled was on the bumps. It was very unpredictable going over the bumps one minute it would be absolutely fine and then as you saw in the first run one little bump upset the car and threw it completely off the course so i think with a little bit more tuning it could be um a lot higher up the leaderboard and with more practice from myself so 12th position for the 037 a very nice car i love the martini paint job it's one of my favorite cars of all time so thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy. More Rally Series episodes will be coming out every week, so stay tuned for those. Thank you all so much for sticking with me whilst I have been away. I really do appreciate that. If you did enjoy the video, it would be awesome if you could smash the like button. And if you're new, then why not subscribe for more videos just like this one. But until next time, hope you have an amazing week, and I'll see you then.